everyone, it's Desiree, and I'm here with another video for the junk journal side, but I don't think it's just for the junk journal side. Again, paper can be for everything. I show do two sides, card making and junk journals. Um, you can choose which camp you're on, that's fine. Um, I do like to be able to combine these two techniques because either side you can put any technique into what you're creating. So that's the beauty of being creative um, and that's the beauty of creating art. As always, I state in the beginning of these, this video is long. I am Gabby. I ramble. It may not be for you. Just saying. But we shall move on now that we've stated that. So the three previous that I've got going, I've got the Black Swan, I've got the Darling, and I've got the Simple Story. So Simple Stories is scrapbook paper. If you are a paper hoarder like I am, and you have a lot of collections because they were beautiful, you weren't sure what to do with them, but you just had to have it, putting them into a junk journal is another way that you can use up the scraps or the paper that you have. And that is what I'm showing. And again, we're just using those papers. We're using plain white copy paper and that cardstock. The other ones, the Black Swan, is an absolutely gorgeous digital download um, from Dreams, etc. Um, there is some coffee dyeing there with a little bit of the extras that you can put in, whether it's sewing, whether it's coffee dyeing, whether um, it's other papers and so forth, but mainly sticking with the digital download and just taking it up a notch with the coffee dyeing or the sewing. And then finally there's Darlene also using a beautiful, um, beautiful digital download from Antique Papery. I always have to pause before I say that name because I want to say authentique and I know it's not that. That's a pattern. That's a paper line. Um, but Antique Papery, absolutely beautiful image. Um, for that one, I am just keeping the images themselves. I am not coffee dyeing these papers. I am keeping them to the original of what they are um, and just using the vibrancy of it. So showing different ways that you can create a junk journal. They can be anything that you want to be. I also started a collage one where it's nothing but collages. And again, I'll have all of these listed down below or maybe up in there as I was describing them and so forth. The next one I wanted to start with, I know I rambled a little bit in the beginning, <laughs> but it's what I do. Um, now what I want to do is I want to create a textile journal. So what I mean by that is I used to be, well, and I still am. And now I call it, I used to be a sewer. Um, but actually, I, I designed and sold quilts. Um, so I say that I'm a sewer because I never did the quilting through the three layers, unless it was a smaller quilt. Um, when it came to a, a twin or a queen or a king size quilt, yeah, my room just couldn't um, withstand that. Um, because of the setup that I had. Um, so I, al I always had the pleasure of working with um, another member to do that quilting. So I just called myself a sewer. And there are just some fabrics that, and I still do sew. I still have them in my other Etsy shop. Um, but I don't have as much fabric as what I did before. So I've kind of scaled that back, but there are some fabrics that I have held on to. Um, because I just can't let them go. So one of them, um, I love the pieces, the pre-cut pieces, the 10 inch, the five inch squares, the strips, uh, the jelly rolls, the cake rolls, the cupcake rolls, the candy bars. These are all different cuts that are in the quilting world um, and mainly by Moda. Moda started it all, for those of you that know the fabric world. So you can see I have a 10 inch piece of uh, fabric here. So I've got my pages and I'll show you that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how we're going to put this together. So this textile journal is just going to be that. It's going to be a lot of fabrics collaged, um, a lot of pieces or strips of fabrics 
coming into each of the elements and the pages. So again, just getting a little bit crazy here. So I have these pre-made. Now this is always the craft card stock that I use. Um, it's eight and a half by 11. I don't cut it. And then these are just pre-lined with some pattern papers that I saw so that they are ready to go. This is always nine out of 10, my cover, whether it's a single uh, signature or a double signature. If it becomes a double, I do put a score line at the five and the six inch line to give me a one inch spine in the center so that I can put my two signatures in. Um, this... I feel is going to be a single signature because I think this is just going to expand. Now, what I am going to do, though, I am going to score down this. And the reason why is because I'm using textiles, fabrics, this is really going to start blowing out and it's going to create this huge V. Um, when it comes to the junk journal. Now, I like that look. I don't have a problem with that because I just put ribbons around it so that you can tie them close. Um, but I don't want this one to do that right off the bat, and it may. Again, everything's going to have a fabric tone to it. All right, so I want to come down the five. I'm going slowly down this only because to make sure I stay within the groove because I'm going through two sheets of paper and then I'm going to do it again at the six. I just want to get these lines in there so that I have them and then I am going to do it on the other side. Just to get those creases going. Okay, I'm going to bend in. Just a little bit, and then again, I'm gonna bend in just a little bit, just to get that stuff going. Okay, so again, this is gonna be a one signature, but she is going to expand a lot. Now, I have the funny feeling I'm going to have to No. Okay, so I'm actually going to keep this. So the pages are actually going to explode outside of this as well. I like that look, especially, and I'll show you what I did when it comes to the pages. Okay, so let me move that. All right, so this is what I grabbed a 10-inch square pack that I had. Now, remember, your fabrics work just the same as the pattern papers. I get asked a lot of questions. Um, how do you know what pattern paper goes? How do you choose your colors? If you have a paper pad, you bought a six by six or an eight by eight or 12 by 12 paper pad, and it's in that same pad, they are designed to work together specifically. Let me show you what I mean. Let me grab a paper pad here. I know, I'm walking away. Okay, so let me grab this. And let's see here. All right, it's going to be strange, but I'm going to use a Halloween. <laughs> you like how I did that Halloween? Um, Hold on. I just want you guys to see this. And it's easier if I grab a six by six. Okay, I'll grab this one and this one. So when you look at your pattern papers, now ignore the sticky that says flag. So here's one by Moda Scrap, Shades of Love. If these are all the papers there, but you can see they go together. It's how they're specifically designed. Even though there's peach and a like a greenish blue, they still go together. Same thing with this. This is the Wildflowers um, by Consortium Craft. 
all of these pages and when we look at them you could say okay wait a minute you know what these are really kind of out there but they are specifically designed the color palette is all being pulled together I know I'm flipping through these quickly same thing with this Altenew it's all designed to work together. I've got grays, I've got peaches, I've got limes, I've got yellows, um, I've got deep maroons. Again, getting these shades darker. You have that color value in your colors. So if you have something like this, they are designed to work together. In the fabric world, now usually for us fabric people, <laughs> We would buy it by the yard. It was bolts, okay? Um, and at the end of the bolt, at the end of the yard, and I don't know if I have something to show. I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, of course not. Yeah, I don't think... I have any fabrics that have that well ones that are easily able to to get with but the fabric what they would do is they would have this uh, waistline it was a white line at the end at the base of the yard it wasn't counted towards your yard and there was dots and those dots were colors that was every single color that was in that fabric line so these 10 inch squares the way that they're sold Okay, they are doing the same thing. So for this one, it goes from black and tan to pulling in some of the blue. Now we're going into the maroon color that they have. There's more of that blue. Now we're going into the blue. And you can see that this entire line just matches together. And then what you would do is to add outside fabrics or anything like that, you would just lay it up. Your eyes will tell you, ew, no, not going to work. <laughs> it really will. Um, your eyes will tell you that. So again, when I get asked that question, just know that everything will pull in together. You, you will see it. And these packs, whether it's fabric or whether it's um, paper, they're actually designed to to do that it's kind of like taking the thought process away from you okay so lots of gabbing there um, but I hope that helps so I have the 10 inch square here this is what they measure they measure 10 by 10 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this up on top of this and what I'm going to do is I do want to make sure that this is centered. So pretty much three quarters of an inch on each side. And then basically a half inch on each side as well. So I'm going to real quick flip this and I just want to put some spots of glue. So I'm going to put some down the spine there we go just a little bit so that this will be held in place I'm also going to just put a line going like this onto the front because we are going to sew this on I'm going to flip this and I'm going to move this to where I think we need to get to. There we go. And I'm just going to push down. I am going to use my brayer. I want to make sure that this is making contact, though. And sorry if I shook the, the camera. Okay, so now that is in place. Now what I'm going to do is when I sew, I'm going to sew around the fabric. I want to make sure that the fabric 
is in place. All right, because that I want that to be my base, and you can see that's where my my crease lines are. All right, so I will be right back again. I can't put my if I put my sewing machine up here, the camera is going to go and then it will drive everyone crazy, and I don't want to drive everyone crazy. It seems like I do that enough anyway. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back. So here's the cover. All right, this is the inside. So I did the two outside lines. I did the lines, or I just wanted to do lines by the um, by where this spine's going to be. All right, I did make the spine one inch. You can make it smaller if you want. Um, now, I always use a white or an ivory thread in my machine. I very rarely change it. I don't alter it to go with my journal. Um, you can, by all means. What I'm actually going to do with this is I'm going to tone it down. So on the fabric, I'm just going to use my brush and I'm just going to go over the stitches just to tone down that white. Now, yes, some of this will go on to um, the material, but not bad because I'm using the brush. I'm making sure I am staying on the material as well because I don't want it on my when I lift this, I don't want to see an edge. Okay. What I will do is come in with my blending tool and come down that edge on this side. And then just ink up. And then I will also do that. Now what's great is I'm able to bend this back so that I can get on the inside because I always forget to ink my edges. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. It's actually kind of comical. Um, pretty comical, actually. But there's always a way that we can get the ink on our pages. Now, I'm going to do the same thing on the inside as well. And again, it's not making them brown it's literally just toning down that white and i'll show you on the inside here all right so if i do this side you can see i don't know if the camera I doubt it. This is toned down just a little bit rather than the stark white over here. Um, but again, I'm using a brush. If I use my tool, my blending tool, um, I'm going, and then I'll just feather out. I would get these harsh lines on the paper, and that's what I don't want. So you can see with the cover, I've got these long these tall and short areas here, that's okay. I'm actually gonna come in halfway through and I'm gonna snip it, I'm gonna grab it, and I'm gonna tear it. I'm going to save that for the tops of my tags. All right, so now I have this quirkiness that's going on on the journal, which I absolutely love. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And you can see, whenever you tear fabric, it'll always give you a straight line. So I probably should have done this first. But again, I love the idea of the quirkiness and the um, that feel that it's getting. I love the fact that this is the top. It's very stringy. I love stringy. All right. And you can just continue to to pull at the threads and everything. 
just to give you that difference. Now I'm going to come in here again, actually. I'm going to continue to pull. Just have to take your time with it. And I really like that. I love the fringe that's up on top of this. I like the, the jagged edge that's down the sides as well. All right, now if you're not one that would want to tear it, you can come in with a pair of scissors and trim it up. And then just take your nail and by digging into this, you're going to create those strings. And then just ruffle them up and you've got the same look of what you have. Now eventually the strings will knot up like right here and then you can be done. So I really like that look. So that is our cover. For our papers, let me show you those. So I grabbed some of those 10 inch squares. So this is gonna be my outside. And what's really neat with this journal, you can put pins. You can, you know, pin items to your piece here. Yes, using safety pins. You can also use paper clips as well. So that's kind of what's really neat when it comes to this. You can pin your tags and everything else, and I'll be showing you that. So again, piece of fabric. I just have a piece of cream paper here, coffee dyed. I did my hinge system, and I'll link that up here as well. Um, to show you how I do this with um, paper bag and sheets of books. I did sew down that as well. I'm going to let that sewing alone. Another piece of coffee dyed, another piece of fabric, an envelope that we're putting in here, music, another piece of fabric, another piece of cream, paper, book with the hinge, coffee, and then our center. All right, so I chose the most vibrant, the most dark fabric um, for the center. So I'm going to fold those up. I am going to grab my ruler. I'm going to put it in the center and I am going to just push down and pull that out. And then I'm going to put my clip in here which I can't find. Oh, because it got connected to my magnet. All right, so since I have a, a, a spine here, I'm not gonna use my book. If you guys have seen my videos previously of showing um, what, how I sew my signatures in, usually I will use a book. For this, I'm just going to use a scrap piece of paper and what I'm going to do, I believe this is the height. It is awesome. So I'm going to use my mat here. Actually, I'm going to grab my scoreboard and I'm going to put this in and I'm going to mark off the spine. So one inch. So I'm doing it at one and two. Again, this is just a piece of scrap paper. And then what I'm gonna do is just fold this. So now I know where my spine sits. I'm gonna come in with a ruler and I'm just gonna mark off some, um, some lines here. And I'm gonna find the middle of my one inch and I'm going to do that by placing my ruler down along my grid and bending it and then matching up these lines. And there is how I get to the center. I know probably many steps 
Um, but, you know, it works for me. All right, so now I'm going to do some markings. So I'm going to grab my pencil. So four and a quarter I know is my center. I'm going to come in a half an inch from the outer side because of the fabric that I have in here. Um, I want to make sure that it does stay in there as best as possible. And then I'm going to put one here an inch and a half from there, from the top, and then again. So I am going to use a five hole system. All right. Now, what I'm also going to do So I want to make sure they are visible and I'm going to mark those on the inside here. So I'm going to make sure that that's sitting where it needs to sit and I'm going to place my ruler down at the halfway mark. And I'm going to place my marks. Again, four and a quarter. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use a black marker for this. Just got to find it. Here we go. Going to do that there. Set a half an inch from the top, half an inch from the bottom, an inch and a half in from the bottom one there. And same thing. So now I have my marks going down the center of my spine. And I'm going to make sure that they are definitely visible because I'm going to need to see those. Okay. So now I'm going to grab my packet. Of course, everything just shifted. <laughs> I'm going to put my template on the inside. And I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to grab this. Putting a fabric on the outside is frustrating. I'm going to tell you now because this little sucker, she wants to flip and flop all over the place. So how do we stop that? very easy. We grab some paper clips and be smart. And on the outside paper, we will clip it on both sides. This way she will stop flipping and flopping. I need more paper clips. The weight fabric is going to be heavier than your paper very simply all right so now I'm gonna flip this over here and do the same thing and you can see it went crooked and that's okay paper clips will not tear there see now she won't flip all right and I'm gonna do the same thing to the inside I don't want to clip it to all the papers because the papers need to be able to move and they will but I do want them to be able to move so you just gotta allow the movement because as you sew your signature in it actually pulls everything together so where you're thinking oh no these papers are sticking out too far they're actually not going to so when I usually do a um, a normal a regular single signature I know that my cover is going to be five and a half inches wide um, I just want to move that up a little bit because wherever this goes this is where she's going to hit um, 
you just need to keep your papers below that. So five and a quarter or less is what you want to do. Let me get my bowl clips here because now I keep doing that. I keep shifting these pages and it's really starting to get on my nerves now. Can you tell? It's all right. Fold. All right, so now I'm going to put my clips on. And you want to make sure that your fabric is flat. And you want to make sure that you have three hands for this. Because this is one of the most frustrating things, at least for me. <laughs> when I'm off camera, I can just whip these out like there's no tomorrow. When I'm on camera, oh, anything and everything that can go wrong does. It's absolutely hysterical. Okay. Now I know this is the up. And I'm going to make sure by looking for my book pages. Yep. Yep. And plus the fabric. All right. So that's how I want all that to set. What I'm going to choose to sew with my all my needles um, I'm going to use to stay with the textile theme I'm going to use some pearl cotton now usually I use uh, a uh, a wax thread I'm a very big fan of the wax thread. So for this, I'm actually going to use my pearl cotton. So as always, you need to have three times the width of your journal when you go to sew the signature. So I'm going to make sure you have one two, three, and I always add a little bit. Grab my needle. Where are we at? Okay, I think we're halfway through. Thread that. All right, now for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to puncture through my journal. I'm going to bend it together and I'm going to push through. And I'm really going to push down. I want to get those, that big hole there, especially on the fabric. And I'm going to do that for each one of these. each one of the holes. So I'm going to do this five times. So I do have to poke through the signature first and then I'm going to poke through the cover. I do like to have the pages bent because that's usually what happens when I sew my signature. I bend those pages. Now this here I'm just going to Poke just a little bit. And I'm making sure I'm going in the center of those. All right, now so this is my top. This is my top. Again, I'm going to check. Yep. All right, so here we go. So when I sew, I start in the center I always have odd number of holes so I start from the center and I go from the inside to the outside of the signature also through the cover and I pull through I leave a tail 
And if I can, I'll take that tail and I'll put it in one of my bulldog clips and just pray that it holds. Just say. I grab my cover, especially because there's a spine. I will turn this. I will pick up the cover. I see the hole here. I'm going to come through, page back onto, open that cover up, and then go into my signature. So can you see that? Now, when you have fabric on the outside, it is a little more difficult to see the holes when you're coming from outside your cover back in. Just kind of, what I'm doing is I'm kind of lining it up with the holes between the cover and my signature once it's established. I'm going to go back to the top from the inside all the way out. So I'm actually threading it. I am not worried about the tension yet. I will be though, and here's where I'm going to be worried about that now. What I want to make sure is when I come back in this hole that I am not grabbing any of the fibers in the thread that I've already sewn through that hole with. And you will know when you do it. As I pull up, that, that thread moved, so I know I didn't hit any of those fibers. I'm now going to come all the way down, skip the center, and go to this one. Again, to the outside, through the cover, and I'm going to pull through. I'm going to turn this, because it's easier to manipulate, and I'm going to come I lost my train of thought. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to come from the top of the cover. I'm going to grab my signature, bend it, and I should be lining right up with that hole. And I'm having the point of the needle tell me. And there you go. I found the hole again. Because again, it is difficult to see. I'm now on the inside. I'm just going to give a little tug to make it tight. Now I'm going to come back through this one. I'm going to bend my signature. And again, I don't want to pick up any of those fibers. I'm going to come through. I'm feeling those fibers, so I just want to, I want to get them off to the side. And now I'm going to come to the back. Hopefully I didn't pick up any of the fibers. I'll tell if I pull. I think I'm good. And now I'm going to come back into the center. And again, by this time, I've got a lot of tension going on. But I'm going to lift her up. I'm going to go in. I'm going to pick up my signature and just guide the needle into the signature and I am in. What I'm going to make sure here is that I'm on the other side of this center line. I have this tail onto the left side and I have now my needle coming up on the right and that's what I'm looking for when I sew my signature. Let me put my rubber cap on my needle and what you want to do is you want to pull straight up. So I'm going to push down, pull up, push down, and pull up. And I can feel and I can tell that I did pick up a thread. But it's in the center. Usually in the center, I am always picking up a thread. But if I can find the difference between the two, there we go, between the two threads, I can poke it through and get it separated. We're going to do that again. I'm going to pull up and I'm going to pull up. I'm going to close this up. Good tension, good tension, good tension, good tension. That's what I'm looking for. I want to make sure that everything 
is nice and tight. And then I'm just going to tie a double knot. Not quite sure what exactly I'm going to do with these. Not sure if I'll have them hang down below or what I will do. I can get rid of my bulldogs. I can get rid of these clips. Save those, put those back in my bin there. Go back to the front. And by pulling on those, that's how those papers are getting snapped in to your book. I also make sure that when it comes to, oh, and I tear this out. I just tear along each side and get that removed. Also, when I do make sure that I'm putting uh, papers in um, into my my binding or my my system here, I'm losing my train of thought. I always want to make sure too that I have a blank piece of paper by them, and I do. And you're going to see why in a second. The fabric is very floppy. Um, very much so. Very floppy, floppy, floppy. Now, you can leave it like that. I do tend to like to just put a line of glue. And that's what we're going to do here as soon as I clean all of this up. Because I need space. I need space. Let me get some of my things away here. Get to order. Let me put that away. It is amazing as to how much we gather as we craft the collection of item, items is just phenomenal. <laughs> okay. So, and I do use my Fabri-Tac for this. So again, I'm only going to put this thin line down this page. So it is nothing major one line and I bring I want to make sure or you do want to make sure that you bring this back and forth as you're putting this there it gives the fabric a little bit of stability but it maintains the fabric look Okay, now for this one, doing something just a little bit different because I've got a pocket here. And I'm actually going to put glue down on that side. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually making a pocket in it. So I got a pocket up here and we have a cutout pocket here, but the fabric is connected. This here, I'm going to do the same thing. I just want to add a little bit of a line to give it some stability. And we're just going to continue on to do that. Now this one I'm actually going to come in. And you can see just how light I am doing that. And if you heard that loud thump, that would be my cat. That would be Max. 
Max is having way too much fun and I disturbed him as I was sewing. My cat is precious. Again, we're just gonna, just some very, very light, absolutely light amount. And we're going to do the same thing on this one. So I want to add my bead of glue. And I'm just adding a little bit more than what I would have. So again, now we have a pocket up here. And I have a pocket here. Yes, it does go through. <laughs> and one last one. It's another reason why I use a very small amount now, you could also sew these on as well, but you know what? Not everybody has a sewing machine. Not everybody wants to sew. Um, and I'm going to have other things. My ephemera is going to have more sewing on it um, and so forth. So again, all of and you can see my pages are coming out, which I think is, is cool looking. I am loving the look of this already. Um... This is the first time that I have put one of these together. I've already made a decision. I'm going to have to trim that. And we'll put a bow on the inside. There we go. Um, I mean, I've put fabric in my junk journals before, um, but not like this I'm and guys I'm kind of winging it so I'm kind of thinking it through as I go so this will be fun <laughs> you never know what I'm gonna get <laughs> I'm just saying just just saying <laughs> from the pieces of material that I did rip as I said I did save those because these are great for the tops of your tags. And that's what's going to happen to the eph ephemera. All of the ephemera is going to have a textile to it. Um, whether it's sewing, it's fabric, and, and everything else. So that's why this is just going to expand. I mean, you can see... Now, that's also because... Again, you know, not too creased in the spine there now I've put the crease in the spine now but even with that sitting like that it just wants to push open um, so with what I'm going to put through this and so forth we should be um, absolutely fine when it comes to this we're gonna create our cover and meaning our focal point on the cover I've pulled in just some playing cards I'm gonna be using some tags um, some of the book pages that I did previously um, and just get those collaged up with material. We'll make some collage pieces as well. So I do hope you'll stay tuned for this. Lots of different ideas. Um, well, let's see how this will completely turn out. We never know, um, but I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be really different. Um, but yeah, so again, as always, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope I gave you some ideas. Again, junk journals can be anything that you want them to be. I do a vintage style when it comes to my junk journals, or I put maybe a vintage style. Not all the ways though. 
um, but that's usually my go-to. So hope I gave you some ideas. Hope you'll give this a try. Hope you'll follow along. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below and I will make sure I get back to you as soon as I can. I will put there's not really too many products that I'm using into this except for maybe tools and stuff like this. But the main focus products that I do use when it comes to my junk journals, um, and also some for card making, you can find in the link down below. I actually have Amazon links um, if you wanted to check them out. They are affiliate links. Only a small, per uh, small percentage will come to me. But again, no change in price for you. But i just like you to know that my links... Um, 9 out of 10 when they're way down below in there for products um, I do they are affiliate links as it states down there if you haven't subscribed yet I'd love for you to be part of the group we come up well I come up with strange ideas and if you like long videos and gabbiness then these you have the right place <laughs> just saying <laughs> it's a lot of fun here um, I hope everyone is enjoying their day and I hope you are continuing to stay safe and healthy. But remember what's most important for me and probably will help you continue to get through this challenge that we have right now. Always be creative. Till next time, guys.